episode, which is the rise and fall of woven mills in um, the Quebec region, I have to do a little, I don't know, snippet of definitions or primer on uh, a few things that will be significant for the, the whole subject. <laughs> um, so the first thing is a definition of vertical mills. And so vertical mills are a very important product of industrialization and kind of like the sign or the, I don't know, like the, the best representation of what um, textile industry will be in Canada as its a day. So a vertical mill is a mill, obviously, <laughs> where everything is done in the same factory from raw fleece to finished cloth. And so you get the fleeces from farmers, from importation, we'll cover that later, um, but raw fleeces. And then from that raw fleece, you go to scouring, carding, spitting, weaving, dyeing, the whole thing. Uh, or knitting as well, because there's knitting machines then. But yeah, so they go through all of that process in this one factory. So they don't, there's not a mill for carding, there's not a mill for weaving, or it's in this one plant. So that's a vertical mill, something that does from start to bottom. Then uh, the other thing that's important to know uh, in order for this whole thing to make sense is the difference between hydraulic, which is water applying mechanical pressure through machinery directly in order to power the machines, and hydroelectricity, which is water applying power to a turbine that creates electricity that powers machinery. So there's this kind of middle step that creates the electricity. And so you go from mechanic power to electric, uh, mechanic power to electric power. And that's two things to remember as we go in the century, this will change a lot of things. So that's it. And uh, the third thing and last primer, or yeah, just basic thing that we all need to be aware of, is that um, the industrialization process is something that doesn't touch just textile, obviously. It's something that touches the whole world. And that's kind of, that happens in the 19th century mainly, but uh, in Quebec will really be um, starting in 1850s. And so it, it transforms Quebec as a, a greater, I don't know what, sorry, I'm so articulate. <laughs> Um, that will shift the society in Quebec from an agricultural one to uh, one centered on industries, factories, and um, factory workers rather than field workers. And so that's, that's kind of what happens in the midst of that industrialization process. And that's where we find the textile industry and the woolen mills. Yeah. So that's it. <laughs> so yes, rise and fall of the woolen mills in Quebec. So the first thing is that the first vertical mill in Canada, not Quebec, Canada, is in Ontario in 1826. That being said, Quebec is a little bit later than that. So the first carding mills in uh, Quebec are founded in 1830s. And that's quite a different system because farmers then get their raw fleeces to those carding mills. And the carding mills do the scouring, so they clean the fleeces and they card them. They prepare them for spinning. And so it gives something like like this, <laughs> where it's fleeces, but all the all the little hair is combed in the same way and so it's ready for spinning and then the farmer gets it back and they at home do the transformation so they spin themselves 
and they knit or they weave themselves. And that's quite important because at that point, the vertical mill is not in Quebec. And most textile workers are still home workers. And that's the way it's going to be in the textile industry for the longest time before industrialization. People will either be lent or be sold spinning machines, uh, spinning machines, Woo. Um, knitting machines, um, floor looms, like the one I have beside me, or um, spinning wheels. And so they're going to be either lent or sold those. They're going to work at home and they're going to then um, sell their product to either like um, a big employer that they already are in business with or uh, they're going to sell it to markets. And that is kind of the the before image of textile industry. Home workers are predominant um, and it will like include the whole family. So sometimes women would be doing the spinning, men would do the weaving, for example. And it's quite an organized operation. And that's the way most textile is done at that point before the vertical mills. So people, sewist, embroiderer, work at home and um, then um, supply it to their employers. But then the vertical mill happens in Quebec. And so it's really um, appearing for most of the 1850s and 1860s. Um, and you'd think, because right now when we think about like woven cloth, we often think mostly about cotton. And uh, you could think or assume that um, cotton would be the first to appear here, but it actually isn't. Uh, for the 1850s and 1860s, it's really woolen mills that come into play in Quebec. And then cotton joins around or starting in 1870s. So there's this kind of 20 years where only wool really is transformed as this vertical step in uh, Quebec. And so it's a constant rise of the one woolen industry um, from the 1850s to the peak in the 1890s and uh, at that point and during that period textile industry is the first industry in Canada it's the one that is the biggest employer is the one that um, is the most profitable and the one that um, supplies the more export um, from Canada to other countries and uh, when the peak arrives, when 1890-ish uh, arrives, the actual biggest mill in Canada is in Quebec. And uh, yeah, so actually Quebec is at one point the center of the woolen um, mill industry in Canada. So it's there's a, a coherence or a pertinence to... to see how they evolve because they are a significant part of that textile industry in Canada. They're not just like a, a sideline and it's not just because I live in Quebec. It actually is really um, significant and representative of how the textile industry goes into the whole country. Um, and so during that 19th uh, century rise of Canadian woolen uh, industry, Main, the main wool used is still Canadian. It's still grown locally by farmers around the mills that bring their raw fleeces and get paid in return either in finished products, although they don't choose that usually, or um, they get paid money and the mill keeps the whole thing and does the whole process and then sells. That being said, although it is Canadian mills and Canadian wool that is used, um, their cloth is really often marketed as Scottish tweed or English plaid or basically they don't market it as Canadian. And that's going to be really significant as we go on because it feeds this idea um, that fabric from elsewhere or cloth from elsewhere is somewhat finer. And eventually, 
that's going to be in part why the Canadian industry kind of dies, as we know now. Um, so yeah, so the way we'll do this is we'll look at two different um, woolen mills. The Payton Manufacturing Company and the Montreal Woolen Mills Company. And the reason I chose those two is not um, random. They're very representative of kind of two models of adaptivity and of how they react to the times and what happens to them because obviously the whole world changes during that industrialization and the way the industry changes with the times will will define how they are successful and lasting or not and so there are two very different um they react very differently to what happens to them to the times to the changes and yeah and so pain is the biggest mill in Canada in the 18, um, 1890s. So it is the most profitable in Canada at that time during the peak of the woolen mills industry. It is the biggest one. It gets federal contracts during um, the Boer War and the second, uh, well, the two world wars. So it um, is 